they almost had me. I thought she was gonna go. Hi and welcome to the SEO podcast, Learning the Secrets of Internet Marketing. My name is Chris Burris, owner of eWeb Results. My name is Matt Bertram, your SEO researcher. Welcome back to another fun-filled edition of our podcast. This is fo- podcast number four twenty-three. No, no, that's oh. that's wrong. Oh, I got this. I got There's this. There's a glitch in the matrix. Can maybe we can back fix, to the future? Fix that. We, we're we're back to the future. What is it? Just four twenty-three. Boom. Okay, good, good. We've got that corrected. Welcome back to another fun-filled edition of this podcast. As always, we have a tip from the previous podcast, and the tip this week is... Create a definitive guide for your industry to attract more links. So we had a three-part series, which was actually interrupted by podcast number 420, uh, and that three-part series was, <laughs> was, about, <laughs> was about six linkable assets and how to actually get links back to them. And so uh, making a definitive guide is an important part of that. I think that was a powerful one out of the last podcast. So uh, make sure you subscribe and you follow. Boom! Boom. Sky scrape it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we are broadcasting live here from Houston, Texas. And Matt and I, we are your results, results rebels. rebels. I want to jump into a review. This results is, researchers. Yeah. Results researching Researcher. rebels. Okay. Is that right? Ah, results ah, researching ah. rebels. With the ruckus, that's fine. Uh, that's ruckus fine. Yeah, full. Yeah. I'll, uh, take it. I'll take it. Let's go. <laughs> so we do have a review. This review is from Facebook. It is, of course, five stars. I just, guessed. Really I, just guessed. I just guessed. I just guessed. Yeah, I just guessed. I was like, that's you know, I got yeah, back to the future. It. Yep, back to the future. You are uh, psychic or psychotic, one or the other. Connor Wickham, <laughs> <laughs> he says, brilliant podcast, great SEO knowledge for anyone in the industry. There was oh, an exclamation. Yeah, that's right. yeah, I did that. Right, yeah. Punch in the face to you, Connor. Uh, for that great review. Thank you. Hey, you're probably tuning back in because most people are tuning back in. And if you are, you might be interested in some of our tips. You can get five online marketing mistakes that tank your business and how to avoid them by going to ewebresults.com slash SEO tips. Yep, that takes you there. Bill, uh, let's see. We have a teaser. We're covering an article today. So we taught, we, we mentioned this, I think, two podcasts ago that we were going to get back to this. GDPR, yes. right? That's the, the Great Britain and the General Data Protection Regulation in the European well, Union. Yeah, all the Europe. Yep, yeah. in, in all of the European Union. And, uh, and we're going to talk about an article, The Ultimate Guide to WordPress. Don't worry, if you don't have WordPress, this podcast still applies. is still going <laughs> to yeah. apply to you. Uh, and so WordPress and GDPR compliance, everything you need to know. We're going to get right back to that in a second. Uh, if you're in a position to... Uh, we'd like you to tweet. Actually, we'd like you to tweet now. And actually, I didn't get his. Uh, this is by. Uh, this page is maintained by Saeed uh, Balki. Okay. Right? So All you right. can uh, connect yeah. with him. If you're in a position to, to tweet, what we would like you to do is tweet um, hashtag SEO podcast. Tag us in it at Best SEO Podcast, at eWeb Results, at Matt Bertram Live, at Chris Burris eWeb. Yes. Is this, did I yeah, get them? Yeah. That was all yeah. of them. Well, yeah, yeah. Good. Memory's not failing me. Uh, and just let them know that we're you're tuning into an article about GDPR. We would really appreciate if you did that. Hey, if this is the first time you've listened to the podcast, howdy. howdy. <laughs> and welcome to the podcast. We are from Texas, so we actually do say howdy. Uh, if you've listened to this podcast before, then you know what we're about to skip. We run a contest each and every week, and the way we run that contest is if we get 10 shikos. A share, a like, and a follow. So if we get 10 shikos and a review, I just read the review, then we move this piece, the piece where we tell you how to connect with us, we tell you how to give us a, a shiko, a share, a like, or a follow, to the end of the podcast. And so we're moving that to the end of the we podcast. We appreciate your engagement. Yep, Yeah. absolutely. Uh, let's see. If you would like a free comprehensive website analysis, you can get one by going to eWebResults.com, and then you will click the free website analysis button, and you will get your... And we have a Facebook chat bot where you Ooh. can chat with us during oh, yeah. uh, 8 to 5 coming soon. 8 to 5 chat bot coming soon. We're getting some love symbols on the on Facebook <laughs> there. We do want to make sure that we pass some and give some love to all of our YouTubers out there. Uh, thank you for tuning in on YouTube. I've got just a little piece of news. I thought this was interesting. I just pulled it up. The FCC bans unauthorized phone charges. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel like this should have been done a long time ago. That's, you know, where they'll put different services on your phone and charge you whatever. Apparently, it's officially banned now. That's That's good. I, I, yeah. Government doing their job. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that is really good. All right. So that is the potatoes of the podcast. It is time to get into the meat. I'll need that later, so I'm glad it didn't fly away very far. We are covering this article, The Ultimate Guide to to WordPress and GDPR Compliance, Everything You Need to Know. If you fast-forwarded through the potatoes, don't worry. If you don't have a WordPress website, this is still relevant to you. So it it really started off with a question, are you confused by GDPR um, and how it might affect your website? Remember, it stands for General Data Protection Regulation, and it's a European Union law. Right? What's like the fine, Chris? What's the fine? The fine? Do you want do you want it in pounds or do you or or do you want it in? I mean, either uh, one. In US you can, you can US convert dollars. it to dollars. That'd be more. Twenty six point eight million dollar fine, or four percent of your global profits, <laughs> whichever is higher. Do this. Yeah. Listen. You need to do this. <laughs> I read this whole thing. <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna go through this and talk to you. You know, if you're in the states or if you're outside of the European Union, how does this affect you? We will talk about this. Uh, it took effect May 25th, right? So it's yeah. already in effect. <laughs> yeah. Um, we like we said, four percent of companies' global revenue, um, and it's creating widespread panic. I would. We we got our plugins yep. in time. We got our plugins. We in got time. the we yeah. got the things in place. Um, so the first question is, does DDPR apply to my WordPress or my website in general? The answer is yes. If your website has visitors from the European Union, this law applies to you. Um, all right, so this is one of the important pieces of that fine, right? So yeah, $26.8 million is a pretty impressive fine. <laughs> Just know that's not where the process starts, right? So it starts with a warning, and then there's a reprimand, then there's a suspension of data processing, and if you continue to violate the law, that's when the large fa- uh, fines will hit. So, okay. so you kind of, in a sense, you don't need to worry. Most of us are gonna be under the radar. One of the points is that this is probably for, um, for those large companies that are collecting lots of data. They just want to scare them enough because they will, in fact, <laughs> in, you know, uh, uh, put fines on them in the twenty million dollar range. Or Did 4%. you see that Google fine? That it was like eleven billion or That's something like uh, out of the U- EU. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that one. Or it, it might have been Great Britain or something. It was like it was in the billions. In the billions. Yeah. Here's your billion dollar. Yeah, I don't fine. remember exactly what it was for, but it was crazy. I, I, it wouldn't surprise me. Four percent of gross. For, yeah. for the year. I was like, um, that's going to hit the stock price just a little bit. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, <laughs> you're going to see a dip. Um, and, and he makes the point, right? This is It's not the EU as being some sort of evil government co- collaboration. Maybe. <laughs> 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 the maximum mm-hmm. fine, uh, in their opinion, is really, again, to target those, those big guys, Facebook and Google. Um, once you understand that it's the spirit of the law, it's really not too crazy. It's just about, uh, and, and, and we'll summarize it here towards the end, uh, but basically the data it covers, right? So what's required in the GDPR? Name, email, physical address, IP address, health information, income information, that's all personal data. And you wanna make sure that's the, that's the thing that you gotta do the following with regard to. I've it. used basically all that to target people. Yes. yes. <laughs> And, and I'm assuming we will continue to do that because it's very effective. Uh, and, and in fact, uh, it, this isn't saying you can't do that anymore. It's just saying you have to put certain things in place to, so, tell, them. to tell them, make sure that they're advised, right? In fact, step one here, explicit consent. Yeah, so, so what I used to do is in the privacy policies, basically like we can do anything with your data. Yeah, we can we want. resell we can, it. We can do anything. We can sell it. We can throw it away. Yeah. We can give it to people. We yeah. can do whatever we want. Yeah. We, and, we changed it. Don't yeah. worry. That was my old days. That was old. So. <laughs> Are you trying to scare everyone? <laughs> Quick, abort. Ask to delete data. So that's one yeah. thing you can't actually do. Uh, you must obtain explicit consent. So, and you can't be, and they're saying you need to use common language, you can't be unambiguous. So now you really should have a button on your form submissions, yeah. right? If you're mm-hmm. gonna collect form submissions from the UK uh, or from Great Britain, I mean, from the European Union. Uh, and it needs to say, hey, here's what we're gonna do with our data. 
and that policy needs to be clear and succinct. Yeah. It can't be mm -hmm. like, and therefore, thus thou, we're going mm -hmm. to wholly hold the data in some, no, no. It's gotta be mm. like, your data is gonna be available to these kinds of people. We might market it to these kinds of people, mm. that kind of thing. Mm. Okay. So that's important. Um, and it so, does say you can't have, this is interesting, a, a kind of a bone of contention. You can't just send unsolicited emails to people who gave you their business card or filled out, <laughs> that's, our, that's half of our marketing strategy. No. <laughs> or filled out your website contact form because they did not opt into your uh, marketing news. They letter. filled out your online marketing okay. form. <laughs> it's, it's a little crazy, right? right? And so here's the deal. You just have to have a button that says, hey, because the, the deal is, is if somebody, maybe they just want to ask a question, yeah. that doesn't mean that they want to actually get on your newsletter. Oh, okay. Right? And so the reality is, at least in our case, right, because just to ask us a question, it takes our time, that costs us money. So uh, here's how it works. If you want to ask us a question, you will get on our newsletter list. And we just need to be explicit about that. Like that's what this rule says. It doesn't say you can't do that. It just has to say, when you press submit, you need to agree to this. And when you agree to this, that's gonna mean that uh, we're gonna well, you know, send you a newsletter. I, I don't wanna send them a newsletter. I wanna send them an email drip to have them call me. Yeah. Like I, I wanna, <laughs> I don't like want- Like a rapid fryer, <laughs> eight emails yeah. per hour until they actually call me to say, hey, please turn this off. No, okay. no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> That's ineffective. You don't wanna do that, obviously. Um, yeah, so you just gotta let them know what you're gonna do with your data. It doesn't mean that you have to even, you don't even have to accept the forms, right? It's your business. If you don't wanna s accept the form submission unless they agree to your terms, great. Like, mm -hmm. But you have to be very explicit about what those terms means, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, they also have to have a right to the data, which yeah. says, hey, I need you to send me an email with all the data that you have on me. Right. You can go to Google and see what Google profiles you. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. it's scary too. Right? Like, <laughs> how much do you know about me? Um, so they have the right to download, and they also have the right to be forgotten. So if they say, "Hey, you need to delete all my data," you've got to have a process and be able to delete all the data. So, so, so this is like total kind of side note. But you know those people that are like robo dialing like crazy, which it looks like you're getting a little bit of yeah, that right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm getting robo dialing. So, so I got a robo dialer on the phone, and I said. Just stop calling me, right? Like, because it was the same. so you you waited through the message, and yeah. Then got and, to somebody. I, and I was like, please take me off and let's and stop calling me. And it was some lady, and she was like, screw you, and she hung up oh, on yeah, me. Oh yeah, I said take me <laughs> off the list. It's like we're not going to take you off the list. <laughs> What? And then, uh, yeah, what the, like they're like, we don't care. The <laughs> they're in like Pakistan or like, not Pakistan, just anywhere, somewhere, like not here. I'm not, I'm not labeling anybody, but I'm right. just saying that Nigeria. Okay, maybe. No, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No. But, but no, seriously. It's they, overseas. They don't care. If, they do and not you know one care. One of the reasons they don't care huh. is because their phone number was spoofed. Yeah. So the number on it's your phone is number. not the, so, not the real so number. So my number got spoofed to somebody at, at yeah, some point. Yeah, and they called I, you back it, and said, stop calling. Yeah, me. and then I was like, how to do this whole thing. And yeah. But it's just crazy, like, where spam's going. But yeah. anyways. Yeah, <laughs> so they have to be, have the right to be deleted. Yeah. And also, if they unsubscribe, it doesn't, that doesn't mean delete them, delete their data. Yeah. It just means stop sending them stuff. Yeah. Go figure, like, that's kind of been in place for a while. Um, next point he talks about is breach notification. So organizations must report certain types of breaches within 72 hours to the authorities, unless the breach is like, doesn't really matter and didn't risk data. So I got all these kind of crazy facts. I thought I didn't have any news. Did you right. hear that like, uh, what is ancestry.com got right. hacked oh, or I something like no, that? I didn't hear that. And yeah. so now they're, they're worried about the data because they got your DNA oh, and, they, and they got your, your, uh, you know, the, the, your financial background. Right. And then they got everything else, and so now s people are stealing a full package, and they of like everything. of everything. And your DNA is your number one definer. Right. So it was is the ultimate definer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's kind of crazy. Uh, okay. So it, it, you got to notify authorities in seventy two hours yeah. if the breach is harmless. Okay. Don't worry. Uh, if the breach is high risk, you actually must inform individuals who are impacted right away. And and the intent of this is like the cover ups, the Yahoo cover ups, yeah. and oh and oh, like that. I just want to. Consent with an attorney, as we are not lawyers. Or consult with an attorney. Yeah. Or yes. Yeah. Yeah. Get the consent. Get, get the consent. Of your policy <laughs> from an attorney. Yeah, get the consent from your lawyer based on what you say. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to us. This is for educational purposes. Make only. sure your lawyer clicks the little box. Yeah. <laughs> to consent mm -hmm. on your policy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Next is data data protection officers. So uh, it actually goes as far to say is 
if you're collecting large amounts of data, then you need to have an officer uh, you know, in the company, in the corporation, that's responsible for protecting that data. Red tape. Yeah. Government Add red, more tape, red tape. More yeah. costs. Add yeah. more red mm -hmm. tape. So here's the summary. To put it in plain English, DDPR makes sure that businesses can't go around spamming people by sending emails they don't ask for. Businesses can't sell people data without their explicit consent. Okay. Uh, good luck getting that consent. It's actually, how many people do you think read the old policy that you used to have on your old business where you could do anything with the data? One Z person, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just, I'm just like statistically, it's gotta be at least one. Yeah, you know there's I mean? one so, somewhere. Yeah. Uh, businesses have to delete user accounts and unsubscribe them from email lists if the user asks to do that. And businesses have to report data breaches uh, for uh, uh, and overall be better about data protection. Sounds reasonable. Yeah, it sounds, yeah, yeah. ultimately it's pretty reasonable. Yeah. All right, so then we're going to get into a little, maybe a little bit more de specific to, to WordPress, but I think uh, keep listening, even if your site's not on WordPress, because we've kind of summarized this. So um, one question, okay, this is WordPress specific. Okay. Uh, is WordPress 4.9.6, um, is it GD GDPR compliant? The answer to this is yes, but I'm going to say, um, say a couple things, right? It depends on the plugins you have. Yeah. It depends on what you have your it site. It can be. I'm going to say that. Yeah, yeah. Well, what it does have built into it is there isn't really any data collection per se, except for the comments, right? Yeah. And so now when people submit com comments, the, the default okay. WordPress setting is to have that confirmation okay. that, hey, we're going to do this according to our pri uh, privacy policy. Uh, so it does collect that data. Yeah. And so, so WordPress has made it so that people can download what they've commented at okay. one point and they, you can delete their data. Right, so, seems reasonable. So no big deal, and that's the next one was comments consent. Yeah, I, I kind of sped forward on that. Um, so just make sure your WordPress is updated to four point nine point six. Uh, again, they have added a data export and erase feature. Now it gets a little more tricky okay. when you start talking about plugins. Right, yeah. so keep those updated. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so one of the things, and, and email is incredibly consistent now, right? So it, I, I I remember a day when you're like, you know what? Uh, I don't know, 2% of emails don't seem to arrive, right? Mm. That just is pretty much gone. Now, they're used, now there's 2% maybe, but they're in spam or they're somewhere else. Okay. Back then, we uh, made the decision internally that for all of our customers, we would store form submissions so that if the email got lost, if the email never got to the customer, at least from time to time, they could check the back end of WordPress and they could go, oh, look, here's the form submissions and we can actually make contact with these people who probably want to give us money. Problem. Is that a good plan? Yeah, problem. Problem. I, I, I actually think we need to go back to all our clients right. and, and make sure that they're all GDPR compliant. Yes. Like, I think that that's something a we're going to do. that we need yeah. to do. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for letting us know that. Yeah. I appreciate it. Without you. <laughs> yes. I wouldn't have, that, that thought wouldn't have been in my head. Yes, and it's and it's again it's twofold. One is make sure when the but forms are submitted that there is a button, and it depends. Like so, we've got a number of clients in the Houston area. Their business is in Houston. Whether they get European clients or not, they don't care, right? So that's a less of a concern. Um, all right, so you've got to handle the data properly. You uh, also WordPress has added a privacy policy generator, so you can quickly make a privacy policy. So that makes it easy. Um, and then Google Analytics. So here's one of them. Most website owners are using Google Analytics. If you're not, you should be. Uh, and there's two things that you need to do. One is either uh, anonymize the data before storage and processing begins, okay. or add an overlay to the site that gives notice of cookies and ask users for consent prior to tracking. We got that. Yep, that's that's already added. Papa uh, and in our case, it only shows up if you're in the EU, so mm -hmm. yeah. That's kind of cool. comes up when I've gone to the site on mobile. On Have you? And uh, anonymously. Maybe I clicked it and it didn't realize it and it's not showing up. <laughs> but I don't know. I just assumed that it was, like, I know we took care of the problem. Yes. And I didn't see the results, so I just assumed, hey, we're, we're in the We're overly US. safe here. That's good. We're overly safe. Good. I'm glad somebody's on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> Contact mm -hmm. forms. Uh, all right, so again, with the forms, you need to get explicit consent that you're going to store their information, uh, explicit consent of what you're going to do with the da data. Uh, otherwise, you kind of should disable all of that storage stuff. Simply adding a required consent checkbox with clear explanation should be good enough yes. for you to make your WordPress forms GDPR compliant. Yes. And same thing really applies to the email marketing opt-in forms. Add the check check in box, or you can just require uh, opt in, double yeah. opt in, right? Yeah. Right. 
No. So our recommendation is don't let them submit the form until they agree to your terms, which says that you're going to give their data away for free. Um, I mean, whatever your policy you decide to be. All right, and then finally, WooCommerce. Of course, lots of data is stored with WooCommerce. Yes. WooCommerce has a comprehensive guide for site owners, um, so you can you know go yeah. go check. Yeah. E-commerce is a whole a whole nother thing. Yeah. Our WooCommerce sites are compliant, by the way. We've mm -hmm. made that extra, yes. especially because they get sales from the European Union. Some right. of our companies. Yep. Are becoming our biggest clients. Yep. Yeah. Pretty at, here at eWeb. Yep. That's pretty cool. No, they, they are. Yes. They are. Yeah. They are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Retargeting ads. If your website is running retargeting pixel or retargeting code, then you do need to have that cookie notice. And that, that's a plugin. Yeah. That's a plugin that yeah. takes care of that. Yeah. Get that. And then the final thoughts the likelihood of getting a fine the day after the rule goes into effect, by the way, this article was written before May 25th, yeah. um, is pretty close to zero, right? Because they have to give you a It was warning. like 2012. <laughs> it's about time we catch up. Uh, and just remember, the European Union is not out to get you. It's out to protect data. One thing that I saw, because you know, I read a whole bunch of articles on this to try and get, get some different perspectives. And one thing that I saw, and I think is actually probably uh, salient, is be prepared for this to come to the U.S. So yeah, oh yeah. It may take a while, but it's probably going to come here, right? Because because when you think about that summary, people should control their data. You shouldn't be able to spam people. Like all of that stuff is real. So I'm going to take the other side of the argument. Okay. Okay. So like things like Monsanto and like GMOs. Right. Can't do it in Europe. Right. But they're like, yeah, sell them to the Americans. Okay. okay. Right? right. So like the Americans is like the biggest market. It's the open market. And, it, and it's the open market that everybody just sells into. Right. And so there's probably going to be a lot of uh, lobbying. Right. To, to so, stop that. To stop, like to from stop. the big companies. Maybe, but right. I, I just see the the EU is. It may take a yeah, while. Yeah, and EU has actually always been pretty aggressive and 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 protecting uh, citizens, consumer data, yeah, citizen yeah. data, right? uh -huh. so uh, in, in citizens in general. Um, I think it'll get here. Yeah, right? well, it's not unreasonable the things that they're doing. That's um, true. You know, it's just a little extra effort that we don't really, you know, would prefer not to go through. Uh huh. All right. Anything else? I think that was pretty good. No. Now you are uh, GDPR certified, except we're not lawyers, so don't take that. that we're just researchers. That doesn't mean anything. We're just lonely researchers. Uh, yeah. Make sure you're taking care uh, of the right steps if you're, you know, doing business or getting visitors uh, traffic from the European Union. Yeah. All right. So if you like this podcast, we're going to ask you to do one simple thing. Share it with five people because this is important stuff, yes. and we got to get it out there. Yep. Absolutely. Um, if you're looking to grow your business with the largest, simplest marketing tool on the planet, the internet, call eWeb Results for increased revenue in your business. Our phone number is 713-592-6724. Um, if you have a referral, right? So some people, I still, it's still hard to explain. I don't, it's not We're going to put explain. an affiliate program on the a link. link. Yeah, a Good. link in the jobs or right. career section on our site. Right. And so you can become a vendor. All right. Yeah. That can work. Yeah. That's what Just we're going to do. Just know. And we'll yes, explain it there. We make websites. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We do Facebook ads and Facebook manage your social media mm, campaign, like your it. social media okay. in general. Yeah. Yeah. I've yes, seen that. I've yes, seen those we ads. Pay per click. Yes, we do remarketing. We are ranked number one for pay per click. Pay per click Houston. Yeah. 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 Boom. Yeah. So. so yeah, we do all those things. If you send us a referral when they pay their bill, we pay you. Right. That works yeah. pretty simply. Um, we were. Fi Wait, I do want to talk about this. Okay. So here's the piece. <sighs> We do need reviews. Okay, right. Yeah, we, we do, do want you yeah, to connect yeah, with yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. And you can connect with us. Here's some social sites. Let's say you could go to twitter.com slash eweb results. Instagram.com slash eweb results. Facebook.com slash eweb results. And let's see what's another one. Um, that's good. It's not that's even good. on here. That's good. It's not that that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. LinkedIn.com slash company slash eweb results. All of those will take you to our profiles on those platforms. And if you're guessing, you probably got a good guess. Yeah. Yeah. You mm -hmm. got you got the good guess. We're going to talk about Pinterest, YouTube, Tumblr, uh, Imgur, and Flickr. When? Is it Imgur? Imgur? Yeah. Imgur. We got some active people here. Uh, cool. On uh, we'll talk yeah. about those next time. Also, if you could leave us a review, you are like, where do you want them to leave us a review? Like, Yelp right now. We yep. want it. We want it on Yelp. How yeah. do they get eWebResults.com slash Yelp. 
That's pretty easy. Yeah. And you can leave us a review. Hopefully, you'll make that review. Five, five stars. stars. All right. Yes. So we were filmed live here at 5999 West 34th Street, Suite 106, Houston, Texas, 77092. Uh, you can find audio, video, and a transcript of this podcast at our website, eWebResults.com. Uh, you guys have made us the most popular internet marketing podcast on iTunes, in the European Union, across the planet, interna- in, in, like interstellarly, just like everywhere. Well, we went to the future and saw. I mean, we're yeah. on actually more than just iTunes and Ahrefs number right. one. Yeah. So we're, yeah, yeah. in the future. The yeah. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much for making that happen. Uh, please keep sending in your, your questions, your comments, your reviews. Uh, we really appreciate you. And yeah, if you want a free website analysis, go to the website. Until the next podcast, <laughs> my name is Chris Burris. Matt Bertram. Bye-bye, Bye-bye for now. now.